Matt and Mercedes Schlapp, both Republican strategists, both conservative Catholics. I believe uh, both were on the call with Donald Trump and other Catholics after that uh, happened earlier. Um, I have to ask you, though, uh, almost a personal question. When you heard about this bashing of conservative Catholics and the bastardization of the faith, Mercedes, did you take it personally? Oh, absolutely. I mean, four of our children go to Catholic school. Uh, you know, our faith is very important. It's central to our lives. And uh, what was very offensive was the fact that the WikiLeaks showed that they were talking about planting this Catholic spring, this revolution in the Catholic Church that would basically go after and undermine the tenets of our faith. Uh, it really was just mind boggling for me, Stuart, because of the fact that not only was it personal attack on our faith, but the fact that the left has an agenda that they are pushing forward yeah. Yeah. to ensure that the Catholic Church adjust to the government's agenda, to the left's liberal agenda, not to them basically being able to profess their faith freely in America. Well, Matt, is there any evidence that what the Clinton campaign said about Catholicism has had an influence on rallying the Catholic vote for Trump? Any evidence of that? You know, it's so hard, Stuart. We look at all these polls, all of us do, to try to find clues. The race is tightening. I can tell you anecdotally that I have people coming up to me all the time, people who, we go to, who Mercy and I go to church with, people who share our faith, evangelical brothers and sisters who are saying, you know, uh, I just feel like Hillary Clinton and her team are hostile. Not only to me do they make fun of me, but they're hostile to the issues I care about. They want to use taxpayer dollars to pay for abortions. Even though a lot of us disagree on the subject of abortion, we shouldn't disagree on the fact that my taxpayer dollars shouldn't go to pay for it. They disagree on the Supreme Court. She wants to put a, a left winger to be that deciding justice on the Supreme Court. Donald Trump has already given us his conservative name. So I actually think it's coming together as this race tightens. Okay, now uh, here's one for you. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley says right. she has decided that she's going to vote for Trump. I think that's a reversal. Here's her quote. What I will tell you is that this is no longer a choice for me on personalities because I'm not a fan of either one. What it is about is policy. Is this the Republican Party coming together behind Trump at long last, Mercedes? You know, I hope so, Stuart. I think that Nikki Haley has it right. I think that, look, Donald Trump is, has, a, has been a flawed candidate in many ways. Uh, we've seen, obviously, the alleged sex, sexual allegations that have come out, uh, you know, the it, problems that have happened with the campaign, distractions in the last couple of weeks. But here's the deal. When you put it agenda next to agenda, it is very clear for Americans to decide how they want America to move forward. And for Donald Trump, his message is, economic growth, national security, ensuring that the right Supreme Court picks are made. Uh, it, you know, it, it's all this that we're able, the fact that he's going to be able to work with Congress to get these deals done. It's about American workers first. It's about making America first. It's about negotiating these trade deals. I think, Stuart, when you look at it side by side, it is about agenda. And when you look at Hillary Clinton and the corrupt practices that she has been pushing forward as, he's, as they're being revealed through WikiLeaks, I got to tell you, you have to panic because of the fact that do we want to allow this corruption, this coziness to continue to occur in the White House? Matt, I get the impression that the Clinton campaign is just running out the clock. Uh, Hillary yes. has one appearance today, nothing planned for the weekend. Tim Kaine has canceled an appearance tonight in Florida, canceled. I don't know whether he, he could get a crowd or not, but essentially yeah. their policy is run out the clock. Is it going to work for them? You know, sometimes we see this in sports where you just barely kind of survive as the seconds tick away. It's very dangerous for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, is that the polls are definitely tightening. This race is getting as close as we always knew it would. Second of all, Stuart, she's running an issueless and an agendaless campaign. If she were to get over the line and win this race, what does she do the next day? She, she hasn't won on anything except the fact that she thinks Donald Trump is deplorable and all of us Catholics are backwards and Christians uh, are severely backwards. And that's not an agenda for the country. And I think it's very dangerous for them from a political perspective. And I look at Donald Trump's campaign. It looks like he has two and three times the number of people that come to his crowds. He has two and three times the number of events that she has. Yeah. He has energy and he's running on issues that people care about. I believe you, you're married and you have five children. 
correct? That's right. Okay. Well, I'll beat you. That's right. Except uh, for some reason, my uh, mercy's in Miami, and I wanted to come back home. Uh, (laughs) Look, I'm an Episcopalian, (laughs) and I've got six children. I'll beat you on every count. Uh, Okay. Oh, you beat us. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Wow, indeed. We're too old by now. (laughs) I'm leaving that alone. Okay. (laughs) It was a pleasure. Great to see you together. Okay.